Welcome to the European Chemicals Agency's podcast. We're joined by Peter van der Zandt, ECHA's Director of Risk Management. The European Union is looking into restricting the use of intentionally added microplastics in products. These are small particles that create big problems. They're also looking at PFHXS and related substances that belong to the PFAS family, also known as forever chemicals due to their ability to stay in the environment for a very long time. Both of these restrictions were discussed by the Committees for Risk Assessment and for Socioeconomic Analysis in their June meetings, and today we will be talking about their outcome. Before that, let's take a step back and talk about the concerns and how the EU is taking action. Welcome, Peter. So, to start with, can you briefly explain how the EU makes sure chemicals are being used safely? Well, REACH is a groundbreaking EU chemicals legislation uh, that is meant to uh, address the possible risks of chemicals to human health and to the environment, and while fostering also innovation. And REACH restrictions is an important instrument to manage those risks, where basically it is a mechanism where either the Commission can ask ECHA to develop a restrictions proposal when they consider that there is a risk that needs to be addressed on an EU-wide basis, or a member state can take such an initiative. Uh, then, um, once these, these proposals have been developed, they are taken to the committees that we have in ECHA, which is the Risk Assessment Committee and the Committee for Socioeconomic Analysis. The Risk Assessment Committee looks at the possible risks of the chemical to human health and the environment, but also looks at the effectiveness of the restriction measure as it has been proposed. While the Socioeconomic Analysis Committee looks at uh, the possible costs and benefits of the restriction, but also looks at possible alternatives of the chemical that is to be restricted. Finally, these opinions of the committees, they go to the European Commission, who then has to decide in comitology with the member states on uh, the restriction itself. Uh, let's then move on to the restriction proposal of intentionally added microplastics. Uh, what does the proposal mean in practice and where are we now in the process? The problem with microplastics is that they are persistent, uh, meaning they can stay for a long time in the environment. They can be degraded over time into smaller particles, but then stay for a long time. Um, they are released to the environment from the use. So we are looking at the intentionally added microplastics. Um, and the different uses are very, uh, uh, there's a wide variety. So they can be used in fertilizers, in cosmetics, but also in artificial uh, turf pitches. Of course, they are used there because they have a certain function. And the function can be, for instance, that in fertilizers, there's a slow release of the fertilizing compound over time to get a nice green grass over time. In cosmetics, for instance, in face scrubs, the releases of these products are quite high. It has been calculated that in the EU, over one year, there could be 42,000 tons of microplastics being released. Uh, and in addition to that, also 16,000 tons of microplastics from artificial uh, turf pitches. So this means that there is a big, uh, big uh, potential release that uh, could be addressed by this restriction. What about ECHA's proposal? Can you give a bit more detail into what exactly it covers? It's a restriction for the placing on the market in the EU of uh, substances or mixtures that are containing microplastics. And it is really to address uh, the possible releases of microplastics to the environment. Um, when we started the work on the restriction, there was no agreed definition yet of a microplastic. So we had to develop one. And basically microplastics are very small, solid particles, often microscopically small, of polymers, but also sometimes containing other substances. Um, and they are insoluble and non-degradable. The intent was not to restrict all uh, um, polymers, but only those that they are microplastics. I understood ECHA's uh, proposal is split into three main elements. Can you describe those elements? First of all, a tailored set of restrictions for the placing on the market of microplastics in certain uses to avoid the uh, releases into the environment. Secondly, where there is no need to restrict the use, um, there is an obligation to uh, provide safe use 
and disposal instructions. Again, to make sure that users know how to treat them and how to dispose of the microplastics. And thirdly, also monitoring arrangements for the users of microplastics so that we know uh, how they are using it and that it can be monitored by the authorities. What exactly is the impact then of the proposed restriction? The restriction is uh, expected to reduce uh, the release of microplastics more than 90% as compared to the baseline. And that would uh, result into uh, a prevention of 500,000 tons of microplastics being released over the next 20 years. So the Risk Assessment Committee has now adopted its opinion. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Indeed, the Risk Assessment Committee has uh, discussed intensively the uh, ECA proposal for the restriction and overall agrees to the proposal um, and uh, agreed that there is a risk to be addressed that is not adequately controlled and also that the uh, uh, releases of microplastics to the environment need to be minimized. In particular, they have also um, proposed more stringent uh, measures to identify biodegradable uh, polymers because these are excluded from the restriction. And overall, they have also had quite intensive discussions on the tests that would be appropriate to identify biodegradable uh, polymers. As compared to the original proposal from ECA, um, they have also been discussing the, uh, the releases from artificial uh, turf pitches, where ECA still had a number of options open for that. Uh, Rack has clearly advised that uh, the use of microplastics in artificial turf pitches should be banned because uh, the main releases from these turf pitches are quite extensive. Now that the uh, RAC opinion has been adopted, what are the next steps? This all will be taken into account then after summer, when the Socioeconomic Analysis Committee will finalize its opinion. And therefore, I hope that by the end of this year, we can submit the package of both opinions from the committees to the European Commission. European Commission will then take it forward. They will, they will make their proposal for um, a restriction, that there will be a scrutiny from the Parliament and from the Council, and then finally there will be the comatology together with the Member States to finalise the decision. So after the whole process has kind of come to the scrutiny phase and gone through the comatology and the decision voting with the Member States, uh, what happens after that? Um, the proposal in its current form uh, contains a number of uh, transition periods and derogations. They are, for instance, for the sectors of cosmetic use and the use in plant protection products. So you mentioned transitional periods. Um, why don't you just ban them immediately? Uh, the transition periods are there to make sure that the cost to the society can be minimized without delaying too much the entry into force of restriction itself. And the transitional periods are there to allow for the development of better alternatives and especially biodegradable uh, polymers. Now, when a sector or a use is not specifically addressed by a derogation in the proposal, then in principle the restriction enters into force directly. And this is, for instance, the case for the microbeads, where there are already alternatives available on the market. Transitional periods are really, as I said, to develop research and development into better alternatives, and in this case, degradable uh, polymers. So, ECA's proposal is on intentionally added microplastics. What about the rest and how does our work relate to the wider EU plastic strategy? Yes, so indeed uh, the ECA uh, restrictions proposal and the opinions that we will be providing are, as the Commission requested, on intentionally added microplastics. It does not address all types of plastics. For instance, also does not address secondary microplastics that they are resulting from the degradation of plastic litter. Uh, but our work is basically part of the whole EU uh, plastic strategy, in which there are also other measures that, uh, that have been taken, for instance, on the use of single-use uh, plastics. Okay, thank you. I think that concludes the microplastics part. Uh, let's move on to PFHXS. Uh, what are the main concerns with these, and what does the EU-wide restriction cover? So Norway has made a restriction proposal for PFHXS, uh, and the problem with this substance is that it is one of the most a uh, commonly detected uh, member of the perfluorinated substances, the PFAS substances, that is found in the human blood. And uh, this substance is uh, found everywhere around the world, even in remote areas such as, uh, as in animals in the Arctic. It's very persistent and very bioaccumulative. 
what kind of uses do these substances have? There are no current intentional uses of PFHXS anymore in Europe. But outside the EU, it is still used as an alternative for PFOS and PFOA. Um, historically, it was also used in Europe uh, for its um, um, properties to, be, to make textile water and oil resistant. And it was also used in firefighting foams. But luckily, there are alternatives available, and many of these uh, alternatives are fluorine free. So why do we want to restrict PFHXS? We want to avoid that PFHXS will be used to replace PFOA. PFOA is a substance that is being restricted, going to be restricted under the POPs regulation from the 4th of July 2020. And basically PFHXS and PFOA are members of the same family of PFAS substances with the same type of properties being very bioaccumulative and very persistent and therefore this would not be a good substitution. Secondly, we want to avoid that we will reintroduce PFHXS on the EU market through imports from outside the EU, in mixtures or in products. That way we can avoid that we will have a further accumulation of PFHXS in our environment, and therefore we would have exposure of future generations, and we can also avoid irreversible contamination of our drinking waters. So with PFHXS, we're at a slightly later uh, stage than with microplastics. So the Risk Assessment Committee has already adopted its opinion, and now the SEAC has also adopted its final opinion. So what happens next? So indeed, uh, the Socioeconomic Analysis Committee has adopted its final opinion, supporting the proposal from Norway as a dossier submitter. Basically, now what will happen is that the combined opinion from the RAC and SEAC will be submitted to the European Commission for that decision-making. Thank you for your time, Peter, and to you, our listeners, for tuning in. You can find more information on microplastics and PFHXS on our website. Remember to also follow us on social media and subscribe to our news at eka.europa.eu.